What's going on, everyone? Welcome into a special edition, we'll call it, of the Broncos Breakdown because Melvin Gordon has re-signed with Denver. So we're going to break all the news down, what this means for Javante Williams, the Broncos draft strategy, a lot that's going to follow. But make sure you subscribe because you know what? Even when Melvin Gordon's making late-night moves like this, we're getting content out to you guys so you stay in the know. Also worked out pretty well because watching a crappy rom-com movie, so it got me out of that. So shout out to you, Melvin Gordon. But let's break it down. So Jordan Schultz, the first one to report the news, saying Melvin Gordon coming back on a one-year deal. Now, Mike Kliss immediately tweeted out that uh, hasn't been finalized yet, but it's a good possibility he returns. So I thought that was kind of interesting. We got a little big J off right there between Mike and Jordan Schultz. But let's go down the avenue. Yeah, Melvin Gordon coming back, running it back with Javante Williams for that one-two punch Gordon last year, just over like 900 yards, eight touchdowns, if memory serves me correct. Three kind of costly fumbles, but we won't bring up old skeletons right now because, let's face it, that was a pretty good running back room. It exceeded a lot of expectations, I think, especially when we talk about older backs. Melvin Gordon, been in the league for a little while. In fact, he's been in the league for, I would say, so long, but maybe longer than you think. He was in college with Russell Wilson in Madison, in Wisconsin, so... Russ gets some of his old college buddies back together on the team. I don't know if this was one of those moves where Russell was like talking to George on this, you know, at uh, at one of the Broncos practices today saying, hey, I heard Melvin's still a free agent. Baltimore's looking at signing him. Can we bring him back here? And George's like, all right, fine. Yeah, you know what? When you're the star quarterback, we can uh, t- tack on a couple of your buddies. But break this move down, for, or grade it, I should say. How excited are you about Melvin Gordon returning to the Broncos? One-year deal. Don't have the contract details. Let's assume it's close to like a vet minimum one year, somewhere around like three to four million dollars. Give me a grade A, B, C, D, or F down in the comment section below. Personally, I'll give it a I'll give it a B plus. I just want to see Javante Williams really take off. You know, when you draft your running back in the second round, the expectation is that's going to be a bell cow back. That's not a feature back. You know. There's, it's fun to put the cliches of thunder and lightning, but when you go second round on a running back, you're expected to feed them the football a lot. And Derrick Henry, I think, was picked in the second round. He did sit, remember, he sat behind DeMarco Murray for like a year, maybe a year and a half in Tennessee, and then he took off. So I'm not going to say this is going to like dampen, you know, or clip Javante Williams' wings, so to speak, but I do want to see the revolt, the, um, uh, the roles kind of switch a little bit, right? Gordon, like last season, they kind of alternated drives. It wasn't so much of, all right, Gordon gets first down, Williams second down, Gordon third down. It was almost like, all right, you get this drive, then you get this drive, and we'll sprinkle you two in every once in a while here and there. But I want to see Williams be like, all right, you know what? Second year in the league, time for me to get 60% of the carries, 65% of the carries, and kind of opposite of last year. So this is a very special, or I should say unique, Broncos breakdown. So if you're coming across our channel for the first time, and you're like, what am I doing here? Why am I watching some guy in his kitchen right now? Well, I don't have my producer with me. We're not in the studios to get the lovely graphics out to you. But if you're looking for a spot that's going to break down Broncos news, even when it's a little late on a Tuesday night, we've got you covered here at the channel. Make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already. Hit that big red button, join the channel. Like I said, when breaking news happens, I get to pause a crappy rom-com, watch the Sweet Home Alabama, never heard of it, wasn't a very good movie, gets me out of it. So shout out to Melvin Gordon for helping me out there. But here we go, Broncos country. Now let's talk a little bit about the draft because what does this do for the Broncos draft approach? I've talked before on this channel about I don't have much faith in Mike Boone being my RB2. Didn't see much of any of him last season. Little bits of Minnesota when he overlapped with Peyton in Minneapolis. But I'm excited because this kind of frees up a draft need for Denver. You know, the Broncos with their nine picks probably don't draft a running back. I I, I think they'd probably go down the route of we can bring in like an Adrian Killens, you know, who we did right before training camp, uh, right before the preseason, during preseason last year, to add some extra depth in competition we can go the undrafted free agent route. We don't have to use a fifth-round pick on a running back. We can go add some more secondary depth with, with that pick instead. Or we can try to, you know, uh, recreate Shelby Harris, right? A little money, line, money ball action right there. Pick up an extra D lineman or two and freeze up a need, you know? I, I think that's what this Gordon signing does. I think ultimately Peyton looked at the options ahead of him. He thought, you know, well, why not just 
run it back. Worked well last season. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's kind of been an interesting trend for this Broncos roster this offseason. There were a lot of, let's be honest, successes last year. I think this team underachieved and also like overachieved in a lot of weird ways last year. For all the injuries they had, this defense overachieved. And shout out to Fangio because he was a defensive mastermind. But also this team underachieved because there was so much talent on the roster. They should have been a playoff team and ultimately fell short. We know how that ended. And so I think Peyton looked at this and go, we don't have to like tear it down, you know, just because Russell Wilson's coming in. We can keep a lot of this core intact. I know it's fun to change things up, but like Gordon and Williams were a good mix last season. Why not run it again? Another thought I had was Melvin Gordon's still a free agent. So kind of makes you think that, all right, Peyton would thought, we're not going to get a good comp pick back, meaning no team has signed him for a decent contract that we will be awarded a draft pick next year to compensate for us losing him in free agency. So he's like, well, if we're not going to get a comp pick, why not just bring the guy back at least? So interesting move right there. So how do you think George Payton has done so far in free agency? Some of the moves he's made, I wish I could put all the names in front of you so it's super easy to see. Randy Gregory, of course, who still coming off that like uh, knee procedure. So he actually hasn't been um, practicing at the UC Health Training Center. Um DJ Jones, Kwan Williams, adding some interior, or some uh, offensive line pieces of Billy Turner, Tom Compton, um, Calvin Anderson comes back. I think the other bigger moves are Eric Tomlinson, a tight end free agency acquisition. So overall, of course, Russell Wilson, how can I bury the lead? How has Peyton done? Scale it for me, one to 100. One being you think he's done an awful job. And I, honestly, scratch that. You can't even start at one. We, let's say the bar goes from like 50 to 100. Because there's no way the floor can be lower than 50 when you go out and get a quarterback like Russell Wilson. You keep a lot of your key core players intact. And you make some good moves in free agency. From I like Kwan Williams signing a ton. Kind of reminds me of Bryce Callen a couple years ago. You know That kind of fail, move of like, maybe other people aren't giving this a lot of love, but I think this is a great move. Um, DJ Jones, Randy Gregory, and some other names as well. Scale for me, 1 to 100. All right, guys, we kind of wrap up today's show. I got to get going. Hope you guys uh, are having a good Tuesday night with the NFL draft coming up. So make sure you are plugged in here at the channel. Stay up to date on everything when it revolves around Broncos draft rumors. And we'll be breaking down every pick. Just because Denver doesn't pick until the end of round two, we're not putting our feet up. We're not relaxing. We're going to be keeping you guys in the know so you don't miss a thing. So make sure you're subscribed. And you know what? Let's end the show on a good note. Let's spam Melvin Gordon's number down below. Show him some love for coming back to Mile High or for, I guess, really Denver bringing him back. We see Peyton bring back K-Jack and now Gordon. Two, I think, popular locker room guys. Uh, good culture fit. So spam 25 down below. Let's show, show, some fla- uh, show some love to the Flash. Show some love to Melvin Gordon. Hopefully he can be a part you know, of a Super Bowl run for this Broncos team. Hit that uh, sub button. We'll catch up with you later with more Broncos news and rumors in our studios with all the fun graphics and whatnot. So until then, go Broncos.